Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror action film, Den Rising, Part 1. Watchtower. Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with a television on a shop window playing ad. The ad is promoting a vaccine created by a pharmaceutical company to prevent people from being infected by a zombie virus. As the camera zooms out, it's revealed that zombies are walking outside the shop window. One human man named Chase is fighting for his life against the massive horde. He manages to escape into an alley by locking a metal gate behind him. However, a clown zombie and a cop zombie find him. Chase wallops the cop with a trash can. The cop pulls out his gun and clumsily fires at Chase, but misses him. Chase throws a metal fan blade at the cop and it lodges into his skull, but this does nothing to deter the cop. He slams Chase against the wall, but luckily, Chase gets his gun and shoots him. However, the clown is still there. He pins Chase to the ground and tries to bite him. The gate also gives way and sets free the zombie horde. The movie flashes back to three days earlier. A viral zombie outbreak has erupted in the town named East Mission. The authorities set up a quarantine zone and evacuations are ongoing. Chase is a reporter for a digital magazine and he came to the town with his camerawoman Jordan to cover the ongoing outbreak. Chase wastes no time and starts reporting immediately. He comments that there are no buses or supplies in the supposed evacuation center run by the authorities. Furthermore, the town is a community of survivors of past outbreaks who were already infected. They rely on the zombie vaccine to remain human. Chase notices a girl named Crystal standing near the fence. Since she is attractive, Chase approaches her for a sexy interview, thinking she will go viral. However, Crystal is not interested in Chase or being featured in his segment. Chase resorts to covertly filming inside the vaccination tents, despite Jordan's disapproval. She remains behind and watches, as a man suddenly drops to the ground and has a seizure. She films the man as he transforms into a zombie. Meanwhile, inside the tent, a doctor injects the vaccine into an infected human, but he suddenly transforms into a zombie too. He vomits blood, and some of it gets into Chase's shirt. More and more patients inside the tent turn into zombies. Things are going haywire outside too, as more zombies turn. Jordan flees the evacuation center and tries to find Chase. She gets into the car and elbows a zombie in the face. She drives away just as Chase manages to get out of the tent. He screams at Jordan, but she's already too far away. He spies Crystal fending off a zombie and goes to her. Together, they jump down to the street below. A reporter interviews the famous journalist who survived the first zombie outbreak in the US years ago. He goes into detail on how widespread the carnage would be. Meanwhile, Crystal and Chase hit the ground, running. A couple of zombies chase after their smelly ass. Chase pummels the zombie with a metal road sign. Meanwhile, Crystal sees a car parked down the street. Besides it, a mother is grieving the young daughter she was forced to kill because she became a zombie. The mother is still in a state of shock, and Crystal frantically asks her where her keys are. Chase catches up to them with a few more zombies at his heels. They manage to shake the mother out of her dazed state, and they all get into the car. Chase asks the mother if her daughter was taking the zombie vaccine. She replies that she faithfully took it every day. This solidifies Chase's theory that the zombie vaccine that keeps the infected from turning is no longer working. He calls the reporter to the studio and offers her his breaking story in exchange for featuring him live and mentioning the online outlet he works at. The reporter agrees, and she interviews Chase on the air. Afterward, a zombie crashes into their car's plate glass window. This causes the mother to wreck the car into a pole. Crystal immediately runs out of the car and into a nearby pawn shop as more zombies converge on the car. Meanwhile, Chase drags the mother out of the vehicle and bangs on the door of the pawn shop to ask Crystal to let them in. After a few moments of hesitation, she gives in and opens the door. Jordan makes it to the town border, where authorities have set up a checkpoint and a wall. She's let inside the wall, just before the soldiers stationed at the checkpoint are instructed by their superiors not to let anyone in because the virus might be airborne. Minutes later, a family comes running up to the wall, begging to be let in, because zombies are chasing after them. The soldiers warn them to go away, or else they will shoot. The family is desperate and still demands to be let in, so the soldiers shoot at them. Jordan is in shock as she takes this all in. She only manages to move when she hears her cell phone ringing. It's Chase calling her. He accuses her of leaving him behind, but she reasons that she didn't see him earlier. In tears, Jordan tells him that they are shooting people at the town border. Meanwhile, the reporter is now relaying the government's announcement that there's a new strain of the virus in the town, and it's resistant to the vaccine. Moreover, the government also says that the virus is now airborne. The reporter then cuts to Chase, who denies the government's cover-up story. The journalist commends Chase for his bravery and tells him to keep up his good work. 
Chase and the others decide to stay the night at the pawn shop, since the border is not letting people in. He asks the mother if he can interview her, and she tells him about how her daughter was bitten in their house one day. Her husband couldn't take it, so he left. Due to grief, the mother is still in denial that her daughter is dead. She thinks they will still be able to rescue her. Chase takes pity on her, and lets her live in her fantasy for the time being. Jordan is taken to a quarantine tent. A doctor makes her swap her mouth, so they can test if she is infected. This doctor is the head of the company who makes the zombie vaccines, and the one in charge of containing the outbreak. Later that night, Chase is woken up by a beeping noise. He sees Crystal injecting a zombie vaccine shot in her arm, revealing that she has been infected all along, and is reliant on the vaccine to stay human. But the vaccine works, and she doesn't turn. They lock eyes with each other, and Chase is so surprised. He says nothing, and just walks away. He goes inside the restroom and calls Jordan. He realizes that Crystal is proof that the virus in town isn't resistant to the vaccine. He tells Jordan to go to him once she makes it out of quarantine. The next morning, the doctor clears Jordan of any infection. She tells him about Crystal and asks him to rescue her and Chase so they can run tests on her. The doctor himself isn't sure why the vaccines suddenly stop working, but he doesn't have the resources to get Chase and Crystal. The military arrives at the checkpoint. The general holds a press conference and announces that they will start firebombing the entire town within two days. Chase finally confronts Crystal about her health. She confesses that she doesn't get her vaccine from clinics, but from a trusted dealer instead. However, she only has one more shot left. The general's announcement comes on the TV inside the shop, and they find out that the military will firebomb the town soon. A group of violent tattooed thugs comes inside the pawn shop to loot. Chase and the others hide. Crystal points a gun at the leader and tells him to leave. He complies. He and his fellow thugs step out into the main road. A couple approaches him to ask for his help, but he demands that they pay him money for safe passage. The man doesn't have any money, so the leader kills him. The woman runs away and is eaten by zombies. Back in the pawn shop, Chase tries to convince Crystal to go on camera, so the world will know that the vaccines do work, but she doesn't want to. In the end, she and the mother go outside to make their own way. Chase calls Jordan and asks her to find him some zombie vaccine. Crystal and the mother encounter a horde of zombies. Chase emerges from the shop, wielding a chainsaw that he then uses to hack at the zombies, so Crystal and the mother can escape. However, more and more zombies are rushing in him. He runs inside a school bus, but there are also zombies inside. He climbs up to the roof and escapes into an alley. He locks the gate behind him to prevent the horde from following. This is the same scene shown at the beginning of the film. He faces off with the cop, and then the zombie clown pins him to the ground. Fortunately, Crystal and the mother save him by ramming a car into the clown and decapitating his head. Jordan asks the doctor for some vaccine shots. The general overhears, and Jordan tells him about Chase's theory that the vaccine-resistant strain does not exist. Jordan finds a note taped to her windshield, containing the address of a storage facility for the vaccines. She assumes that it was the doctor who gave it. They arrive at the warehouse. Inside are mountains of boxes. There is also a zombie security guard chained to the ground. They find the vaccines, but they are from the same batch that was administered to the patients in the evacuation center, so Crystal can't use them. Chase changes the plan and decides that they have to let the world know about the conspiracy, so they can prevent the town from being firebombed. Meanwhile, the mother hears noises down the corridor and sees a broken teddy bear lying on the floor. She finds the room where the sound is coming from and sees a young zombie girl inside. The mother thinks that she's her daughter, and she lets the child hug her. The mother dies as the girl chomps on her, and more zombies arrive to feast on her body. Crystal agrees to be filmed by Chase. She's starting to turn into a zombie, and she attempts to inject the government-issued vaccine into her arm. It doesn't work, just as Chase said. She then injects herself with her remaining personal supply, and Chase helps her. But zombies see them, and they have to flee. They lock themselves inside a room. Since they're trapped, Crystal finally shares her life story with Chase. She got bitten five years ago, and has been using the vaccine to remain human. However, she was shunned for being infected. She was fired, and her fiancé even left her. Heartbroken by other people's treatment of her, she hid and never let herself be close to anyone. Chase finally uploads the video, and it becomes an instant hit. However, they are still trapped inside the warehouse. He calls Jordan, who informs him that the video has revealed the conspiracy behind the outbreak. She urges him not to give up, because she will talk to the agency so they can be rescued. Meanwhile, the group of thugs from earlier arrives at the warehouse. It turns out, they're using the warehouse as their headquarters, and they use the room that the mother went into to hold the zombies inside. The leader discovers Chase and Crystal. He knocks out Chase and takes Crystal with him. Jordan goes to the general to request that he stop the firebombing. He tells her that he wants to rescue Crystal and Chase, but it's unfortunately not up to him. 
The general holds a joint press conference with the doctor, but he jumps in and blames the doctor for failing to contain the outbreak. The thugs tie Chase to a forklift steering wheel, and they let the zombie attack him. A zombie with a knife stuck on his back approaches Chase, and he uses the knife to cut through the ropes binding his hands. Another zombie bumps into a nearby gas tank, causing an explosion that kills the thug guarding Chase. The public backlash causes the government to let the military take over the virus containment instead of the doctor. The general tells Jordan that they're restarting evacuations, and he has sent a rescue team to the warehouse, but there's nothing but zombies there. Chase calls Jordan, who is confused because the general told her Chase was dead. She realizes that the general lied, and he didn't send anyone after all. Meanwhile, the leader traps Crystal in his office. He reveals that he specifically went inside the town, once the quarantine wall was up, so he can reign in the chaos of the outbreak. Crystal tries to attack him, but he overpowers her. She then bites him, and gleefully shows him her zombie bite. It dawns on the leader that he's now infected, as Crystal escapes from the office. She meets Chase, but the leader catches up to them. They manage to fend him off, and the mother, who is now a zombie, appears and bites the leader's chick neck. Back at the checkpoint, the general announces that the military is now taking over. They are effectively pushing out the doctor and his company. Instead, they will be administering microchips to the infected, which will keep them inoculated for up to a year. Jordan finds all this suspicious. She goes to the doctor, who is understandably upset. He tells her that those microchips will allow the military to track the location of every infected person in the country. Jordan scrolls through the pictures she took of the military trucks that entered the checkpoint the day before. She sees the boxes of microchips already inside the trucks, which means the military had them already when they arrived. The doctor also looks up the label of the vaccine shipment in the warehouse that Chase took a photo of. He discovers that the shipment came from the general's base. This means that the general deliberately sent the defective vaccine to the town, so there would be an outbreak and the military could be the hero and take over. They will then use the chips to track and monitor the infected. The doctor intends to expose everything, but soldiers come and kill him. Jordan has just enough time to film a video on her phone for Chase, telling him to track the Weibull. She then hides her phone in a newspaper vending machine. The soldiers capture her. Chase and Crystal arrive at the quarantine wall on a motorcycle. However, the leader appears with a zombie horde in tow. Chase and Crystal hide as the soldiers shoot at the leader and his horde. They grab some weapons and fight the leader. However, Chase gets distracted by some zombies, and the leader gets Crystal in a chokehold. He slams Chase to the ground and bangs Crystal's head on a nearby car. The leader then throws a bomb strapped to an axe at the wall, intending for it to blow up and kill the people inside. Chase runs to get the bomb away. At that moment, the leader starts turning into a zombie, and Crystal pummels him with a chainsaw. Chase throws the bomb back to the leader, and it eviscerates him. The bomb explodes and kills only the leader. Chase and Crystal are ushered inside the checkpoint. Crystal gets injected with the microchip, as do most of the people in the city. Chase opens his phone and discovers that Jordan left him multiple messages. The reporter announces that the country is now at ease, knowing that the military's microchip program will keep them safe. The journalist disagrees and tells her that the zombie virus is still out there, just lying in wait. Chase calls Jordan's phone and discovers it inside the newspaper vending machine. He watches the video that Jordan left for him and realizes that the conspiracy is not what they thought it was. The movie ends with Chase and Crystal watching as the military airplanes bomb the whole town. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.